Hey guys, in this video I will show you what you need to configure in the VEST tool for your one wheel style vehicle. I assume you have VEST tool 3.0. Um, it's always good to check that. You go to help and about VEST tool, it needs to say 3.0. Unfortunately, that is still no guarantee that you have the right version of 3.0 because Vetter seems to be releasing those sporadically and they all get accessed through the same link. So um, this version here is for firmware beta 17 and higher. Um, it was released December 30th and this is what I'm working with. Um, now. Let's start with the motor settings. So in the first tab, you just want to have it set to FOC with hall sensors, and I assume you followed Fungineer's video. In the current tab, um, you set the max currents. This is matching the capabilities of your VESC. So for a cheap Fokker, it is 70 amps, the same value negative for the max brake current. Um, and the battery current also, again, it's your peak capabilities, not the uh, sustained current capabilities. Uh, OC mode, we leave that disabled. Um, I don't know what it does. Voltage, um, you don't really ever want to be in a situation where this gets hit, so it should be something sufficiently low that uh, the balance configuration will always preempt that. You just want it sort of as a last resort, but essentially your BMS will do that anyway. Um, so I have it at something very low, like 38 to 36 for a 12S battery. These values you don't want to change. Temperature, you could play with these values a little bit, um, but the defaults work pretty well. So 60 to 70 Celsius for um, the MOSFETs. Keep in mind the PLA or PETG, if you print it, your uh, enclosures, they could start melting at those temperatures. So even if the vest can handle more, keep in mind what your enclosure can handle too. Then in advanced, uh, there are a few settings that uh, you may want to look at. Uh, minimum, maximum voltage. You want something fairly low here for minimum voltage so that you can operate the Fokker or the VESC on the uh, on the bench when you're updating firmware or something and you don't have the full battery at hand. I often use a 12 volt battery to configure my Fokker. So um, this is what these settings really are for. Um, and here the temperature sensor. Some of the older Fungineers hubs, the FUB 188s and the new uh, float wheel hubs, they all have this NTC 100K sensor. So the newest version of the VEST tool supports that. And then you want to set your beta value to 3990 Kelvin. Um, and this will give you correct motor temperatures as well, even with uh, those other hubs. The new Fungineers hubs, they don't need that. They uh, do have the NTC 10K uh, thermistor in there. So you can just leave it there. The beta value, however, does need some adjusting. I think it is also 3990. Everything else you leave as is. Um, in the FOC settings, Fungineers goes through how to set up uh, the gen general tab, the hall sensors. The other tabs don't apply for the modes that we're using. And in advance, I also have never made any changes. Um, there is some discussions going on right now about the controller decoupling. I don't understand what it's doing, um, so I, I'm not going to mess with it. But this is something that's currently being explored. Um, yeah, you can look into it yourself. Now. In the other motor settings, there is additional info, and that one is interesting. If you want your speed to be correctly reported in the app, you need to set this to 30 motor poles. Pretty much all the fun wheel um, hubs that I'm aware of have 30 poles. And the wheel diameter, 
Um, depending on your PSI, this might vary a bit, but 270 millimeters is pretty close for all the wheels that I know. Um, the other ones are really just optional, but this here will determine your speed. Now let's go to the app settings. So in general, all you really need is to set the app to use to balance. Um, there is one other thing, the pairing done, that helps. Um, if you set it to false, you do not need to authenticate your Android device. Sure, the downside is that somebody could theoretically hijack your desk uh, if they connect with their Android phone, but I don't care. I'm willing to take that risk. Maybe if you live in a city and there's tons of users, I don't know. But for me, it makes it a lot more convenient pairing my app this way. Um, everything else you can ignore. And now the balance tab. So here, this is the most important tab for your one wheel. PID tuning. This really dictates these three values are the most important ones for the behavior of your vehicle. If you're a beginner, you want to start out and you want something really conservative, set P to 3, I to 0, and D to something like 800. Um, P, if you are not familiar with um, PID control, um, I recommend you take a look at Mitch's um, How Balancing Works video. Uh, he really explains it very well, but in layman's terms, the P is the proportional value that will give you um, how quickly the board reacts to uh, you dipping the nose of the board. So if you want the nose to dip only slightly and it starts accelerating uh, right away, then you want a higher P value. So uh, a lot of riders, uh, especially the more experienced riders, have something between 8 and 12 in here. Um, but when you start out, I would recommend three or even two, um, especially if you have not ridden a one wheel before. Then the second value to look at would be D. Let's leave I at zero for now. D, uh, the higher the D value, the softer the response will be. So um, especially if you have a higher P value, then the D kind of counteracts the jerkiness of the board. So um, I would not set my D anywhere below 200. I think that's the minimum usable value. And once you go be beyond 1,000, I also heard negative things. Sometimes it, the board stays tilted for a long time be before it comes back to the top. Um, I have not had much fun with uh, values of 1,000 or higher, the board just acts kind of weird. So something between 500 and 800, when you're starting out, let's just go with 800. The I value, in the beginning, you don't need it. Leave it at zero. If you have hills like I do, um, then you will see that no matter how hard you set your P, it is difficult to get up a hill because um, with the hill being steep, your board, you have to, you feel like you're almost touching the, the road with the nose in order to accelerate up that hill. So the I is the integral value, is something that you want to set if you have hills, but be really careful with I, because I, unlike the others, the maximum you want is 0.01. If you accidentally set it to point 0.1, your board will go crazy. So you've got to be really careful, especially because the Android app, if you hit the plus minus, it increments in increments of 0.1. So all it takes is one button click on the Android app, and you have a board that's completely uncontrollable. So make sure that you have 0.01 or less. and a lot of people are using half that, so um, 0 0.005. And I think for beginner, even if you have some hills, you may want something even lower than that, like um, 
I've seen people use this value. So um, these are the values to start out with. The loop hurts. I would leave the defaults. The designer of this balancing app recommended using a thousand hertz for um, for this main loop. So I really have no reason to mess with that. Um, if you set it any higher, some people have tried 2000, you're really messing with your CPU's ability to handle it. You might actually uh, run out of CPU cycles and you can get some unpredictable results. I would advise against messing with this value. Um, the other ones here, I would leave the set point uh, low pass filters at their defaults, which is zero and one. Um, and then this one here also doesn't matter. And the D term PT1 filter at 10 hertz is also the default. I'd leave it there. Do not mess with that zone. It really doesn't make any sense to do that because essentially you're giving the board some wiggle room to change without being affected by PID. But then once you leave that dead zone, then it comes back with a vengeance. Um, so there's really no reason to use that. Current boost is also something we don't need. So leave that at zero. Startup. Um, here there is some tuning you can do to your liking. Um, I have my pitch axis tolerance. This is the, ax, the, the axis that is considered when balancing. So when your board goes left and right, when you're riding, uh, when you're pushing down the nose, that is the pitch axis. And uh, five degrees seems to be the right tolerance to use. And then the startup centering speed at 20 degrees per second. Um, I like that behavior when I'm starting out. It starts out nice and smooth, um, but you may want that a little bit slower, but it means that it'll take longer for it to center itself when you start out. This tolerance here, I increased that from the default because it allows me to start up on a hill when, I'm, when my board is sideways. So if you're on an incline and you want to start, and you have it at the default that is something maybe like five degrees, then it will not let you start because it, considered it considers that a fault. So um, if you set it to 30, then if you're somewhere even in rugged terrain and the board is not perfectly level, uh, you can still start the board. Brake current, um, I live in a hilly area, so you definitely want it to something higher than five amps so that your board doesn't just roll down the hill when you let it go. Tilt back, the board's mechanism to tell you that something is wrong. That either that you're close to the limits of your setup, or that you're um, above the maximum voltage, or below the minimum voltage. And then there is constant tilt back. I actually recently, Originally, for some reason, I liked having a slight constant tilt back of two degrees, and maybe it was just because I took over somebody else's configuration. I've set it back to zero recently because uh, I feel the board um, is, is uh, easiest to handle that way. So let's leave that at zero for now. Um, now about the tilt backs. So duty cycle. Duty cycle Duty cycle is, in a way, the best capacity to accelerate your board. And once you've hit 75% of that capacity, you want the board to tell you that because you're close to the limits of the vest. And um, if you don't get tilt back, then you're risking that you're getting a nosedive. And a nosedive, as we all know, is something we want to avoid. So the tilt back, you don't want to set it too high because the downside of tilt backs is that they themselves cause the duty cycle to be increased. So if I'm at close to 75% duty cycle because I'm going 15 miles an hour and now I'm going over a bump or I'm doing something that further increases the angle of my board and the board tries to balance me 
it goes to let's say 78% duty cycle now I'm getting tilt back that tilt back itself can only be achieved by accelerating the motor which further increases the duty cycle that you hit so you want some headroom so that you don't go from um, the tilt back to the nose dive because let's say we set this to 85 right now what what can happen is that the act of performing the tilt back can now take you from 85 percent to 95 or 99 or 100 percent duty cycle and that triggers a shutdown so that would result in a nosedive just because you've hit tilt back so if you're unhappy with the 15 miles an hour that you might be able to reach with a 75 percent duty cycle tilt back and you say oh i've I like to live on the edge, I'll set it to 85 and then get my tilt back. The problem is that you now may be reaching 17 miles an hour, but the act of hitting that speed limit or the duty cycle limit now causes the tilt back and the tilt back itself will increase the duty cycle of the board because of the acceleration needed to perform the tilt back and it is very easy to now go from 85 to 95 or uh, above. So this is why 75% is a safe value. I've had it at 78. Um, there you can maybe you know, tweak out to another mile an hour. So that's up to you. But keep in mind, you do need that buffer. Uh, you don't want to set it to something like 0 0.9 or anything like that. And then the faults, I think I've covered that in my other video. Um, but yeah, essentially that really depends on your personal liking and your um, foot sensors. The uh, delays, I have it configured so that the half switch delay is very short, which makes it easy for me to stop the board to get off the board by lifting my heel at low speeds. Uh, the full switch fault delay, that one I have set to something fairly high um, because for a while I still hadn't trusted my foot sensors and I have connected a beeper that alerted me when um, the contact was lost on both of the foot sensors and that way I had about a second to react to it either to fix my foot position or jump off the board or slow down. So um, this is a setting you may want to use, especially when you're still tuning your foot sensors. And that's about it. In the IMU, um, there are the Mahoney values. A lot of people have been playing with them. I have to admit, I have still not touched them because I find that the PID values were perfectly fine for tuning the behavior of my board but this is something that you can use to tune the behavior of your board um, but I would recommend you first exhaust all your settings in the PID uh, configuration until you have the optimum value there and then if you want to, to go beyond that you can then tune it using other settings but um, don't just because you can achieve the same effect using other um, settings i would not recommend doing so man this was one boring video thanks everyone for watching and i hope it wasn't too boring till next time